Hey guys, how's it going? This is Watch from the MW Technology Channel on YouTube. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to monitor your Canon DSLR via pretty much any Android tablet. Now, I'm going to use a really cool app called DSLR Controller, which is pretty darn amazing and it's really easy to set up. So I'm going to show you how to do it. And this is probably one of the coolest things you can do on a tablet right now. So let's get right into it. Okay, so the first thing that we'll need to get started is an on-the-go cable. Now, if you don't have one of these, you can find them on eBay, Amazon, wherever you can, usually under for $5. Really, really useful. Uh, you can use them for transferring data back and forth and a whole bunch of other things. The other thing that you're going to need is a standard type A to type B USB connection, really common cable, and it came with your camera. The other thing obviously you're going to need is a Canon DSLR camera. So I'm um, just using a T2i. You can use pretty much any Canon DSLR camera. Unfortunately, this, the application does not support other brands of cameras at this point. Last but of course not least, you're going to need a Android tablet running the DSLR controller app from Chainfire. This app is the key to everything and it costs $7.99, but it's worth every penny considering the capabilities it has. So once you have all these things, go ahead and connect the camera using the USB connection and the OTG cable. And once you turn on your camera, you'll see a message pop up on your screen asking you what to do. And you'll see the DSLR controller app icon right there. And you want to just uh, tap on that and then tap on always. And there you'll see the app pop up with whatever your camera is shooting. So now let me take you on a quick little tour of what this app can do and what are some of the capabilities. We'll start at the very top on the right hand side. And when you click on this icon, you'll be exposed to the main histogram, which also has an RGB mode. And this is really great for evaluating your overall levels. Right below the histogram, we have a zoom in button, which has a five and 10 times zoom. Next, we have an overlay mode, which is really handy if you wanna use the rule of thirds, it'll give you those guidelines. It also has some great crop marks, including the standard high definition standard of 16 by nine, and my favorite, the two through five aspect ratio. So if you're filming something cinematic and you know you're gonna be cropping that later on, you have those guidelines, which is just awesome. Next, you have your main video recording button, as well as a still button if you want to just snap one still photo. And just below that, we have a full settings menu, which allows you to do a lot of interesting things and take pretty much full control of your cameras. You can do HDR over here. You can do time lapse. You can actually go into full screen mode when you hit record so you see nothing but the screen. You can even change the format and quality of your still images and the format and quality of your video images. So if you want to shoot maybe a higher frame rate at 1080p or 24 frames per second or 720p, it's all there. And and including, of course, your JPEG settings, and if you want to shoot RAW. Later on, you also have configuration for your live view settings. So if you want to change the render quality to performance or quality, you can get either 16-bit or 32-bit quality, change your frames per second, uh, as well as uh, putting filters on for different things like peaking mode or contrast, uh, mirroring. There's just so much here, and this is so amazing to have a full control of your camera just in the tablet itself. Next, we have some of the settings over here for your main exposure. So starting with the ISO, you have all the increments available to you on your factory firmware of the camera. So I can go ISO 6400 or go down to 400. I can also change the exposure compensation and bracketing and save that. You can change your aperture from four to whatever you have, whatever is available on your lens. I'm right now at four. I can go down to five, six and it's instant it's very very responsive extremely quick go down to your shutter speed change whatever shutter speed you want around 150th I can go 250th of a second go one 
thirtieth of a second. And again, you can see the responsiveness of this app is just incredibly responsive. Some other important controls are full white balance controls. So you can go full auto, you can do custom white balance or any of the presets. You also have ability to change your picture style from anything that's in your camera as a custom picture style or any of the standard presets. You could even change the auto focusing mode from live to face detection to quick. Another cool setting is this remote manual focus mode where you can actually set up different points of focus for rack focusing or if you're using a follow focus system. Uh, there's actually a guide that I'll link in the uh, description below if you're interested in that. And lastly, at the very top left, you have a setting for turning off live view mode. So if you want to save battery or just turn off that whole feature, you can by just a simple tap on that icon. There's of course a whole bunch of other things that are amazing about this app that I won't go into in this video, but of course there's lots of videos and tutorials on how to use this app to the full extent. But really what's amazing about this app is that when you hit record, the frame rate doesn't drop. It looks exactly the same as it does when it's not recording, which is not the same thing if you ever use the Canon EOS utility that you would run on your Mac or PC, which does not work as a great monitoring solution. Solution. This, however, does work as a great monitoring solution. The images are fairly crisp and sharp enough for you to actually do some manual focusing with them. And really this app makes Android an excellent developing platform for other developers to make similar applications for all the different types of cameras that are out there. And hopefully this is a real wake up call to Apple developers or to the whole iOS platform that I don't know why this app is available on Android and not on iOS. There's millions of people wanting like an application like this. Of course the new DSLRs that you're getting they have Wi-Fi capabilities and all that stuff but you can't really use that for monitoring since there's a quite a big delay but of course with this with a hardwired connection you can integrate uh, um, a Nexus 7 or a small tablet like this into an entire DSLR rig or camera rig and really use it as a great monitoring solution and since it has so many powerful capabilities of controlling all the different settings and parameters of the camera really makes you understand the power of the developers and how an application can really make the whole tablet quite a useful device. So that's really it guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This is a really, really cool app that isn't available on the iPad or any iOS devices. This is a huge advantage that Android is currently offering above anything else. And a really simple method to really get started in monitoring what you're doing. If you're making videos on a kind of part-time or hobby basis this is really a must-have app and uh, you might already have everything you need to get this working and started so thank you so much and if you have any questions again leave it on a comment down below make sure you're subscribed to our channel on Majid Sayyid too and make sure to visit our website every now and then instafuse.com where we talk about all this stuff all the time so thank you so much and we'll see you later take care Hey guys, how's it going? This is Waj from the MW Technology Channel on YouTube. And in this video, we're doing an unboxing and quick look at the Asus Mimo tablet. Now this is a 10.1 inch Android tablet, runs Android 4.1 currently.